Um, virtual friends, make sure you're muted, please. Ethan, I need you to mute, please. Control D. I am Yeah. It's really just crazy. Ethan, honey, I need you to mute, please, if you're going to be on the call. Control D. If you continue to ignore me, I will. Thank you. Thanks, bud. All right, guys, here we go. Chapter 11. Um, okay, when we left off, though, let's remember that he was doing so well. We talked about yesterday he has this sense of pride and accomplishment. He's feeling really good about things. He's got food. Not only does he have the berries that he found, he's got eggs now. He's got a shelter. And he's finally got fire. So he's got a lot of good things going for him. So much so that he almost forgot that he needed rescue still. He needs and so, to go out looking for help. So he needs to go out looking for help. But, when he but we learned yesterday looking at that population map of Canada, is there a lot of help to be found probably where he's at? No. Okay, so here we go. Chapter 11. There were these things to do. He transferred all of the eggs from the small beach into the shelter, reburying them near his sleeping area. It took all his will to keep from eating another one as he moved them. But he got it done, and when they were out of sight again, it was easier. He added wood to the fire and cleaned up the camp area. A good laugh, that, cleaning the camp. All he did was shake out his windbreaker and hang it in the sun to dry the berry juice that had soaked in and smoothed the sand where he slept. But it was a mental thing. He had gotten depressed thinking how they hadn't found him yet, and when he was busy and had something to do, the depression seemed to leave. So there were things to do. With the camp squared away, he brought in more wood. He had decided to always have enough on hand for three days, and after spending one night with the fire for a friend, he knew that a staggering amount of wood it would take. He worked all through the morning out of the wood, breaking down dead limbs and breaking or chopping them in smaller pieces, storing them neatly beneath the overhang. He stopped once to take a drink at the lake, and in his reflection, he saw that the swelling on his head was nearly gone. There was no pain there, so he assumed that it had taken care of itself. His leg was also back to normal, although he had a small pattern of holes, roughly star-shaped, where the quills had nailed him. And while he was standing at the lake shore taking stuff, he noticed that his body was changing. Z, yeah. Um, I think he's using like, well, he's using a lot of wood. No, wood isn't. No, I guess he's using. What? You guess what? Never mind. Z says Z went through this whole story and just said never mind at the end. Okay. All right. Um, he had never been fat, but he had been slightly heavy with a little extra weight just above his belt at the sides. This was completely gone, and his stomach had caved in to the hunger, and the sun had cooked him past burning, so he was tanning. And with the smoke from the fire, his face was starting to look like leather. But perhaps more than his body was the change in his mind, or in the way he was, was becoming. Yeah. I am not the same, he thought. I see, I hear differently. He did not know when the change started, but it was there. When the sound came to him now, he didn't just hear it, but would know the sound. He would swing and look at it, a breaking twig, a movement of air, and know the sound as if he somehow could move his mind back down the wave of sound to the source. He could know what the sound was before he quite realized he had heard it. And when he saw something, a bird moving a wing inside a bush or a ripple on the water, he would truly see that thing. Not just notice it as he used to notice things in the city. He would see all parts of it. See the whole wing, the feathers, see the color of the feathers, see the bush, the size and shape and color of its leaves. He would see the way the light moved with the ripples on the water and see that the wind made the ripples and which way the wind had to blow to make the ripples move in that certain way. Um. One pause there. That's. Do you guys get what he's saying? Like, it's one thing to like just like glance around and see something, but he's like really. He 
Like, like he's really focused now. Why do you think? He's now alone. He's he's hard to to worry about okay, he's alone. He, his mind isn't being distracted. He's becoming a panther. Um, he's not becoming a panther. Maggie, what are your thoughts on this? Why is this change happening? He's becoming more like really focused on little details like this. I guess there could be like less stress, maybe just like now that he's alone, he doesn't have to. Deal with his parents and the fighting and um, like the secret, like the thing, he can just kind of like relax. Kind of, like, okay, so Maggie says she thinks maybe it's because he's his mind is more relaxed now because he doesn't have all the stress and pressure of school and parents and the secret and everything else just weighing down on him. He can just be more relaxed and be more open to noticing all of these little details. Sean had his hand raised first, and then I'll come to you. Yeah, he did. He's had his hand raised for like before Maggie. Sean. Um, maybe because, like, being really focused on it, like, do what? Um, maybe he's focusing on it because, like, say if the bird was doing something, he'll know which one it probably would be, and, like, the Okay, so he's focusing on these little details because those little details might be important. important details, right? They might matter to him. So not as he just like glancing, seeing, oh, there's a bush over there. Now a bush means something to him, right? It might have berries. It might be able to provide some leaves or something that he can use. Like, so he's noticing these little details he's because these family. details are more important to him now. When he had a nice warm house and his mom cooking dinner, did what a bush looked like matter to him? No, because he didn't have to worry about anything. He didn't have to worry about any of that stuff before. Z, you're next. Can I just kind of like show him that, like, these details like actually like help him because if he sees like the water rippling, he knows which way the wind's blowing. And he knows like the bird could be dead if its wing is sticking out of the bush. Like, dude. <laughs> I don't know, but like it's like like it stands out to him because he's surviving on his own and everything in nature can be useful. Okay, yeah, exactly. Everything in nature at this point is gonna be useful to him in some way. His life is literally depending on all of the little things that are happening and taking place around him. So he doesn't have a choice. Yes, it's easier for him to notice these things because his mind isn't as bogged down, but also because he has to notice these things to be able to survive. Okay, great job, guys. All right. Um, none of that used to be in Brian, and now it was a part of him, a changed part of him, a grown part of him. And the two things, his mind and his body, had come together as well, had made a connection 15 feet. What? Nope, I skipped a page had made a connection with each other that he didn't quite understand. When his ears heard a sound or his eyes saw a sight, his mind took control of his body. Without his thinking, he moved to face the sound or sight, moved to make ready for it, to deal with it. The, there were these things to do. I mean, think about this. If he didn't, if he heard like a twig snap behind him, he's got to pay attention. What if the bear is on its way back, right? Mm -hmm. Or the porcupine, like he's got to be, he's like, his senses have to be aware. Just to be aware. Just to be aware of surroundings. Yeah. When the wood was done, he decided to get a signal fire ready. He moved to the top of the rock ridge that comprised the bluff over his shelter and was pleased to find a large flat stone area. More wood, he thought, moaning inwardly. He went back to the fallen trees and found more dead limbs, carrying them up on the rock until he had enough for a bonfire. Initially, he had thought of making a signal fire every day, but he couldn't. He would never be able to keep the wood supply going. So while he was working, he decided to have the fire ready. And if he heard an engine or even thought he heard a plane engine, he would run up with a burning limb and set off the signal fire. Things to do. At the last trip to the top of the stone bluff with wood, he stopped, sat on the point overlooking the lake and rested. The lake lay before him 20 or so feet below and he had not seen it this way since he had come in with the plane. Remembering the crash, he had a moment of fear, a breath-tightening little rip of terror. 
but it passed and he was quickly caught up in the beauty of the scenery. It was so incredibly beautiful that it was almost unreal. From his height, he could see not just the lake, but across part of the forest, a green carpet and it was full of life. Birds, insects, there was a constant hum and song. At the other end of the bottom of the L, there was another large rock sticking out over the water and on top of the rock, a snaggly pine had somehow found food and grown, bent and gnarled. Sitting on one limb was a blue bird with a crest and sharp beak, a kingfisher. He thought of a picture he had seen once, which left the branch while he watched and dove into the water. It emerged a split part of a second later. In its mouth was a small fish, wiggling silver in the sun. It took the fish to a limb, juggled it twice, and swallowed it whole. Fish. Of course, he thought. There were fish in the lake, and they were food. And if a bird could do it, he scrambled down the side of the bluff and trotted to the edge of the lake, looking down into the water. Somehow it had never occurred to him to look inside the water, only at the surface. Zeke. There's this way to catch fish with your hands where you can get food on your fingers and come up to it and you can grab their mouth. Yeah. All right, so Zeke said he knows about this way to catch a fish with your bare hand. If you get a little bit of food or something on your hand, they'll come to like eat it off your well, finger like each, and then you just like snag them by the mouth. And well, like like Sam says he did it one time. No, I didn't do that. So we were in Gulf Shores messing around at the beach and then I just grabbed one. <laughs> In my bare hand, I brought them back. They wouldn't let me, like, strangle them or anything, so I had to put them back in the water. Sam, why would you strangle them? All right, Sam says he just reached down in the water and just snagged the fish one time. Like, super fast, like Mr. Miyagi and Karate Kid catching the flies or something. Just snagged the fish, okay? This bad. But they wouldn't let him kill it, so he had to put it back. Okay. Or there's, like, this stuff I've seen on shows where they went toe-fishing. Toe fishing? Yeah, like they would stick their foot in like some kind of catfish hole. <laughs> yeah, like catfish. that's illegal to do that now because people that's, catch female catfish weird. in Missouri and it makes them wild. It's a, it's illegal to yeah. do that in Missouri. Okay, something about sticking your foot in a catfish hole and they no. bite your toe and you Yank pull them out. out. That sounds awful. Fish but sometimes to... it's hard to get your foot out. Yeah. Oh, and Zeke says it's illegal, don't do that. Like, All right, Sean. Okay, so my... my Dad, when he goes fishing, well, I think on that, it's pretty cool. So, um, he has, he buys these noodles, and then it's like garlic thing, mm, the and then he dips dough it dough. in there, because catfish love garlic. Okay, so use garlic to catch catfish off. Well. All right. You don't got garlic. Right yes. so he doesn't have fish. garlic. Well, but he's making a connection. That's fine. All right. Here we go. All right, we got fishing stories. You know, he hasn't pulled a whole place yet. The sun was flashing back up into the eyes, and he moved off the side and took his shoes off and waded out 15 feet. Then he turned and stood still. With the sun at his back, he studied the water again. It was, he saw after a moment, literally packed with life. Small fish swam everywhere, some narrow and long, some round, most of them three or four inches long, some a bit larger and many smaller. There was a patch of mud off to the side leading into deeper water. And he could see old clam shells there, so there must be clams. As he watched, a crayfish, looking like a tiny lobster, left one of the empty clam shells and went to another looking for something to eat, Who's digging that? with its claws. Who's that? Deep. So with crawfish, no, <gasps> crawdads, or whatever you want to call them, oh, yeah. you can um, catch those really easily. And so you can cook them, and you pull their tail off, and there's a bunch of meat in them. Yeah. All right, I so went, Zeke was talking about how crawfish or crawdads, whatever you want to call them, are pretty easy to catch and cook and eat. Okay. Get the ground lies behind their pincers. Okay, I've never eaten crawdads, so I don't know. I eat them by myself. They're like a Cajun food. I know that. Like, really, yeah. Um, Riley. Well, if you're catching the fish, who knows? Who doesn't know? Uh, what if the fish what if the fish was down by the dead body? Because the fishes are in the lake with the dead body. What okay, well, that's a thought. Lake? What if it's a different lake? It's just, no, this is his lake. The guy he didn't go anywhere else. Just a guy. Okay. Lake. While he stood, some of the small roundish fish came quite close to his legs, and he tensed, got ready, made a wild stab at grabbing one of them, but he wasn't as good as Sam Curley. What? 
They exploded away in a hundred flicks of quick light, so fast that he had no hope of catching them that way. But they soon came back, seemed to be curious about him, and as he walked from the water, he tried to think of a way to use that curiosity to catch them. He had no hooks or string, but if he could somehow lure them into the shallows and make a spear, a small fish spear, he might be able to strike fast enough to get one. He'd have to find the right kind of wood, slim and straight. He had seen some willows up along the lake that might work, and he could use the hatchet to sharpen it and shape it while he was sitting by the fire tonight. And that brought up the fire, which he had to feed again. He looked at the sun and saw it was getting late in the afternoon, and when he thought of how late it was, he thought that he ought to reward all his work with another egg, and that made him think that some kind of dessert would be nice. He smiled when he thought of dessert, so fancy, and he wondered if he should move up the lake and see if he could find some raspberries after he banked the fire, and while he was looking for the wood, right wood for a spear. Spear wood, he thought, and it all rolled together, just rolled together and rolled over him. These were the things to do. Yeah. I just brought up a thought about the eggs. You know how, like, well, about how you could the fish, you could use the spear and actually the fish on the spear with the fire? Yeah. You remember okay. how he poked a hole in the egg, why didn't you leave it on the stick? Or tie the yeah. fish on the no All right, now. Zeke's saying he can use the stick as, like, something to help him cook over the fire. No. So once he stabs the fish, you can just leave the fish stabbed on the spear to no. hold it over the oh, fire. No. Or you no. can tie it on Did you know fish don't eat? you have to gut the fish. Yeah. Um, he also said he could leave the eggs stabbed on and like, I guess, cook the egg over the fire off the stabbed stick. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to go over these questions together and then you guys have um, an author study assignment to do on your own. There is um, a part about Gary Paulson, our author, to read. And then you have a few questions about Gary Paulson. And then you're going to put together a timeline and build a timeline about Yay. Gary Paulson, our author. So these are the things that we are doing for the rest of our reading time today. Um, so but let's discuss these couple of questions first. There's only four questions. Remind me, how had Brian begun to physically change since the crash, and why were those changes happening? And also, like, hang on, you guys have been very talkative this morning. Virtual friends, one of you guys, fill me in. What were some of the changes Brian was undergoing, and why? Josie. He was a lot skinnier. skinnier. It's because he hasn't had as much food. food. Right, way less food, okay. His stomach. The stomach was like caving in, it said, like hollow looking. Okay. Um, what else? What other changes? Um, it listed quite a few different things. That's a virtual pitch. Sean. Um, it like, but it was so much different than the thing. You learned how to survive on your own. That's question two. Hang on. Physical changes. So physical or like his appearance. What else happened to change his appearance? Mags, what changed? Um, he, like his sores were like they weren't there anymore. Oh, okay, he was yeah. healing all of his like sores yeah. on his leg from the porcupine, um, the swelling on his head. Okay. Um, Jason, what else? So like he said that his face was starting to look like leather because he was been sleeping by that fire and the smoke. Okay, his face was starting to look like leather because of the fire and the smoke. Good. Um, Sean. But like his mind was getting used Not to his mind. Not his mind. His body was getting used to nature. Zeke has Zeke. Zeke. He was tanny. He was getting tan. Why is he getting so tan? Because the sun in the morning and he got sunburnt and then like. It just, yeah. yeah. Sunburnt and then the sun in the morning. Okay. All right. So now, Sean, now I'm coming to you. Number two. How has Brian's mind changed since the crash? Shawnee Pooh. It like got to know the nature and like 
been focusing on nature. Okay, he's way more focused on nature than he ever has been before. Sam, why do you think he's focused on nature so much? Uh, because he has to. Because he has to. Like you said, there's like a quick snap. It could be, I don't know, a bear, an alien, something like that. <laughs> alien. It could be a bear or an alien if he hears a twig snap. Well, probably a bear, <laughs> probably not an alien. Um, okay. Like yeah, he has to be hyper focused on all of these things. Okay, Zeke, what else? Um, well, yeah, I just think that maybe in that match, just like, oh, okay. Zeke yeah, just had his hand up, he was just exercising. Um, and what is Brian's plan if he hears the plane engine roaring? If he hears a plane engine roaring, Sophie, what's he gonna do? He's going to make something. Riley, what's he going to make? A signal fire. Do you think that, let's think about this. He hears an engine roaring in the dif distance, a plane he coming. Said he was going to and then he's going to run up there with the stick to light this fire. It'll go out probably. Is that going to be enough time to build up the smoke for the, to get up there before the plane no. passes by? Sure, no. he already has smoke going since there's the he does, but the fire's in the shelter and the smoke is kind of like well, it be coming dissipating out? before it gets to. Okay, also in his in his signal fire when he went for the stick the and Yeah, I just yeah, am worried. To get his stick on fire too. Right, so he's gotta wait for his stick to catch fire, then he's gotta run up there and get that fire started. So yeah, I'm I'm wondering, is that fire gonna be big enough and strong enough to create the kind of signal fire that he would want if a plane were coming? But Kaylin's just shaking her head. No, this you guy's a ding dong. Um, you can use leaf in your um, about that signal ew, fire. Ew. Ew. I have some. Sean says he could use some fertilizer to get it going really quickly, and by fertilizer he means manure, and by manure he means poop. 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 Um, all right. He's not all right. It's gross, but he's not wrong. I don't, I don't have anything like that. He really isn't wrong. He really isn't I don't wrong. have anything like that, but it's something about the signal fire. Okay. If he makes it, beavers like wood and logs. So what if uh, the beavers are already Okay, so Jason says he's worried about him just leaving a stack of wood up there because we know that there are beavers at the lake, and are the beavers going to come get all that wood that he's. No. Cut up all nicely for them. No, they're no. they're they're no. they're, they're Okay, I don't know. And then Brian's finally realizing that there's something in the lake that's fish. incredibly useful. Why fish? Fish. Okay. Fish is good. Now, can you just even if his spear plan works? And he just stabs a little like, fishy. Like, yeah, can you just like eat a fish off a stick? No, you have to, you have to skin it. You gotta like skin it, right? Because it's gonna have scales and stuff on it, right? So you gotta like, you gotta scale it. Yeah. Okay. You gotta scale the fish, get all the scales off. Lily, what else? Do we know what else do we need to do if you're fishing? Like a big boat, and they went fishing, and they caught off a bunch of fish, and they had to scale the fish, and they had to take the eyeballs out. Yeah, take the eyeballs out, scale the fish, take the eyeballs out. Um, okay, but is this still like a good idea that he should keep trying to go for the fish? He's still got some stuff to work out, but probably a good idea to be going for some fish. That's a good solid source of protein. And because the, the turtle eggs, I mean, we're hoping he gets rescued pretty soon, but he's only got a limited supply of turtle eggs. It's not like the turtle's laying a bunch of eggs every night. So, so whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Um, all right. Okay. So he's got a good plan. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to pass out these papers to you guys. Um, and you guys should have this too. 
Now, for virtual friends, yours is divided up into two different assignments. The second one, the timeline part, isn't going to hit until 8.30. Um, but what you do have is this little article about Gary Paulson and some questions about him. So go ahead and start working on those. And then after you do that, you'll have a separate thing that hits at 8.30 that says timeline. And it gives you eight different things. You're going to write look, research to find the date. And once you find the date, then you're going to put them in order on a timeline. Okay. Um, so that's what I got for you guys. What questions do you guys have? Anything virtual friends? Okay. All right, guys. Then I will see you at nine for math. Bye. 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 Here goes that. Just wait, I need to come out.